radically as a one will out by God. This is the true self, and where the identity is an illusion. Greetings to one not in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to talk on the topic, what is my identity? Before that, let's have a word of prayer. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. Thank you for letting us all gather in your name, and thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Help me and guide me to tell thy word in almighty precious name, I pray. Amen. If you have access to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have a secret identity that you're not aware of. And that identity is hidden somewhere much more precious. And that identity is eternal. So now let's talk about this eternal identity. Name. Name is the most important fa uh, factor determining the identity of a person. Like my name is Raya and my identity is there in my passport, in my Emirates ID, school ID, etc. Let's take the book of John, chapter 19, verses 26. When Jesus then saw his mother and his disciple, whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to his mother, Women, behold your son. If we go through the Gospel of John, we can see that John addresses himself as a disciple whom Jesus loves, but not by his real name. So let us find our name in Christ Jesus. Christian, who is a Christian and where was it originated? Let's take the book of Acts chapter 11, verses 26. And then when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught a great number of people. The disciples were called Christians, first at Antioch. The word Christian means Christ follower. The Bible says that good work does not make us acceptable to God. In other words, a person can live up to high moral standard, give money to the poor and go to church, but yet cannot be a Christian. Titus chapter 3 verses 3 to 6 clearly tells us that we were once the slaves of sin. But because of the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have been saved. This is further explained in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. These verses clearly share that salvation is a gift of God and nothing we can do to earn salvation. A true Christian is a person who has accepted God's gift of salvation and put their faith in Jesus Christ. This includes accepting Jesus' death on the cross as a payment for our sin and his resurrection as a proof of his power over death. The next most important question that frames your Christian identity is, who am I? I am the adopted child of God. This points us to some of the most beautiful verses in the Bible containing the precious promise of our loving, nurturing, and protecting God, our Father. John chapter, uh, John chapter 1, verses 12. Yet to all those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. I am a new creation. When flesh or physical body and mind is influenced by the Satan or by the world, and the new self is realigned with God's spirit, and the flesh can no longer control the born again person, and he believes that he is in Christ, at which he becomes a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, and the new is here. I am loved by God. I'm loved by God. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have an eternal life. This shows how deep God's love is towards us that he gave his one and only son. I am made complete. When God looks at you, he sees completeness in everything that you require for life God and godliness in you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that the Christ's power may rest on me. And there are not many more identities that we can see in a Christian's life. Let's look at some examples. The first example is of David. He is known as a man after God's own heart. And the second one is our father Abraham, father of faith. With this, I conclude that the very uh, we all have a very unique identity in Christ. May God bless you. Thank you.